Hello, it's Phil Thatch, and I'm out today with the Canon R7 and the 200 to 800 lens. And this is actually the this is actually day two of this video. I came out to these same locations the other day. Um, this is a lot more difficult than sitting at home in the blind where birds are attracted to bird seed. So you're fairly sure you're going to see some. It's a lot more difficult also than going to the Hawassi Wildlife Refuge where you're almost sure to see some sandhill cranes. But this is the type of photography that I do quite often. And it's fun to do it with this lens because you've got 200 to 800, which is 360 to 1280. So you really have a lot of range. If something comes close, you can get a nice relatively wide, comparatively wide shot. And if something's a long way away, or not a long way away, but really, really small, you can usually capture it as well with 1280 millimeters full frame equivalent. So first let's look at the shots that I was able to get on day one of this adventure. On the first day I was only out for a little while, but I was really happy to see this yellow rump warbler kind of in a sticker bush sort of area. And I like that it's gazing up at some berries. It's got a branch in front of it that I'm not fond of. Here is a great blue heron that I found at Harrison Bay State Park. And it's in kind of some ugly area, but beautiful background, I thought. And stay tuned at the end. I want to show you something I did with Photoshop's generative fill to fix that picture. And here is a ring-billed gull in flight. This is at 800 millimeters. So 1,280 millimeters full frame equivalent in flight with the R7. Well, we've been in the park for just a couple of minutes and found a few young deer that I made some backlit shots showing how valuable it is. Let's say if I had just brought the 800 F11, I wouldn't have been able to get those shots, but because I'm on this zoom, I was able to shoot in the low 200s and get photos of the deer. Here's a few shots of the deer, and this is 300 millimeters, 3200 ISO wide open at F7.1, just a beautiful little deer, little backlit, same deer, a little different pose, looking at me just right on the side of the road there at Harrison Bay State Park. And here's one more deer from another location. This is not backlit. This has the light behind me and on the deer, which is a more beautiful way to do it sometimes. I came over to this beautiful field, and first I made a couple of pictures of bluebirds in this tree behind me. And then I came to this, the field part of the field, instead of the tree part of the field, this beautiful golden-looking grass. It's a little bit more cloudy right now as I make this video clip than it was when I was shooting and the grass was really popping. I found some deer, a couple of little spike deer, made some photos of them and some eastern bluebirds. And then as I made my way back to the car, there's a big tree near the car and I saw a tufted titmouse there. So I got lots of photos to show you now, all with the R7 and the 200 800 lens. There's the male eastern bluebird in the tree that was right near where we parked and then I saw some more bluebirds out in the field and just started walking through that tall grass. And I found this beautiful shot. It's backlit and I had to raise the shadows a bunch to make the bird not extremely dark, but I just thought that goldenness was beautiful. And then here's a little spike deer that was wandering around in the tall golden grass. And I made a number of shots of him as he wandered around in the grass and I wandered around trying to get better angles on him. And finally, I found a spot where the grass was mowed and both the deer and I were on the mowed grass, and I got this final shot of the beautiful little spike deer there in the huge field at Harrison Bay State Park. Sometimes the R7 struggles to land focus with this lens, just like it does also with the 100 to 500. It's just a little bit of a struggle. I've been using uh, electronic shutter and the very slowest drive mode, which I find that it works better in that than some of the faster ones. I might miss some shots because I'm not shooting super fast, but the shots that I'm taking, more of them are in focus than if I was using a fast drive mode. This is not the philosophy that a lot of YouTube photographers take, but it's what I've been working with and it often works pretty well for me. Here's a few more shots from the field. Another male Eastern bluebird. This one's up in a tree and it's in the field with the golden grass, but the golden grass is not in the background of the shot but the golden grass is definitely in the background of this 800 millimeter shot at F9 wide open, ISO 800 and 1 500th of a second. Then across the street, here's a tufted titmouse that was in a tree. Just a beautiful shot of the tufted titmouse, I thought, another 800 millimeter shot.
Heather actually, she's riding with me this morning and she pointed out a squirrel that looked really cute and it was in decent light and I got a shot of it somewhere between four and 500 millimeters eating a nut or an acorn. We came across this deer that was grazing right beside the road and I made a shot of it at the full 800 millimeters, 1,280 millimeters full frame equivalent. Almost filled the frame with its eye and you can see the car reflected in its eye. And here's that squirrel that I told you about in the previous clip. Look how cute it is. It's got a little bit of sun right on it as it's standing there in the leaves and it's found an acorn and it almost looks like it's smiling at us as it munches on that acorn. And in that same area of the park, we also saw this white breasted nut house which I like to call the upside down bird. And it was on a branch and fluttering around and I managed to get this one shot of it before it flew off. Just saw the cutest little small young deer out the window and got a very backlit, as you can see, photograph of it up close. This is definitely one of my favorite shots of the day, this 481 millimeter F8 shot at 1 400th of a second of the adorable little deer. It was actually munching on that tree to the left of the frame. And look at the beautiful backlit shot here. This one's at 742 millimeters of the same deer. It would kind of walked a little bit further into the woods. And that's brown leaves with bright sunlight coming through them, making that beautiful color in the background. We pulled up right beside this fallen tree with great light on it. And I was sitting here looking at the tree and Heather said, there's a song sparrow right there. And I didn't even see it and wouldn't have seen it except for Heather pointed it out. And I got some nearly frame filling photos of it at about 600 millimeters. Here's the 600 millimeter song sparrow shot there. And you can see those brown leaves from the fallen tree in the background. And I thought it was just beautiful. And then it actually flew a little bit closer. And I made this shot, which is my favorite of the two, a 481 millimeter shot wide open at F8. 1 640th of a second. We rolled through the day use area. This morning when we came by, it was closed and we went on to the park. But when we came back after leaving the park, it was opened up and we rolled through, saw two or three really interesting birds and didn't get a shot. Then we came down to the very end of the day use area. And on top of this little sign or whatever it is, information board, there was a mockingbird on the roof of it in perfect sunlight. So Got a couple shots of it. There's the beautiful northern mockingbird on top of the information board sign. And it's almost like he's saying, hey, do these feathers make my butt look big? I also love the way his eyes look in this shot. Sometimes you catch a mockingbird and the eyes look dark. I'm always more happy when they look bright like this. Today's the first day that I've struggled with focus enough to where I needed to use the manual focus override. And it actually works pretty good. You can be holding the lens like this and your thumb will almost naturally rest right on it. It's the ring feels like it's made of metal. I don't know if it actually is made of metal, but the, the little uh, pattern of it is really rough and it's easy to find purchase on it to move it. And then you can dial in if you're focus, if you're focusing on something in the thicket that's just a little off, it doesn't take much to get it uh, going. So I actually kind of like the position of this. I've heard some people complain about the position of the manual focus ring, but I don't think it's that bad. There's a three position switch here, autofocus, control, and manual focus. If you have it on autofocus, the camera autofocuses, but you can still move this focus ring to override. If you have it on control, it functions as a control ring. Now an L series lens would have a control ring and a manual focus lens. This lens only has the control ring. And then the other position is manual focus. And in that position, the camera does not autofocus if you press one of the focus buttons and you can only focus it this way. But I leave mine in autofocus and I try to autofocus, but if I need to bump it a little bit, it does operate as a manual focus override. I mentioned earlier in the video when I showed you this picture that I was gonna tell you later in the video what I did with Photoshop's generative fill. And here's what I did. I got rid of that ugly beach and put a nice, beautiful, sandy beach there. Now, I would never do this and not disclose it, but I did think it was interesting how I could take this really ugly foreground, just this muddy beach on the side of the lake and change it to a beautiful sandy beach just by highlighting it and saying generative fill, sandy beach. I've enjoyed being out today with the R7 and the new 200-800 lens. It's a really potent combination. The autofocus is a little bit of a struggle, but you know what? With the R7, it's a little bit of a struggle in lower light. 
like I had this morning, even with the 100 to 500. So that's to be expected. But once you overcome that, just like you have to do with the 100 to 500, it does really well. So thanks for watching. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see some more stuff like this, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.